you know, it started with a feeling. Like I remember the feeling the first time I played an electric guitar. Yeah. That feeling has not gone away. <laughs> Hello, music lovers. Welcome to Why Music Matters, a podcast where we examine the power and influence that music can wield in our lives. I'm your host, Jeff Myers. Today's guest is an old friend of mine, a veteran of the Western New York music scene, and a 2016 inductee into the Buffalo Music Hall of Fame. Alison Pipitone has been writing songs, playing gigs, and releasing albums since she formed her first band as a teenager in the late 80s. Over that time, she's fine-tuned an astute blend of rock and roll, roots music, and raw Americana influences. She recently released Best Things, her 10th album with the Alison Pipitone Band, and our conversation touched on the writing and recording of that album, Alison's earliest musical experiences, what being an educator has taught her about songwriting, and what continues to inspire her all these years into her career. Thanks for joining us. Welcome to Why Music Matters. I'm with my friend, Allison Pipitone. Singer, songwriter, guitar player, band leader, educa- educator, and a uh, friend. Thank you. Hi, Jeff. Welcome. Thank How are you, you. doing? I'm We've good. known I'm each other forever. Forever. Um, been part of this Buffalo area music scene. Not mid '90s and beyond, I would say. Yeah. Right? Would you agree with that? I think the first time I heard you and saw you, you were. If, correct me if I'm wrong, but I seem to recall a cover of a Springsteen tune, and I think it was Secret Garden. Is you that know, possible? I, it is possible, and I actually remember that because, for whatever reason, I don't I don't remember a lot of things, but I do remember <laughs> it, it was because you were so nice about it. I it was oh. at Central Park Grill. Yes, it was. And I at don't CPT. do a lot of covers, and I believe my sister Gabrielle for I don't remember the event or the reason. But I did Secret Garden, and you, I don't even, I think you might have even written about it or you at least talked to me about it, and I feel like that was the first conversation we had. Uh, yeah, that's So we got off on on the right foot. We did. <laughs> <laughs> totally. I just remember it being really refreshing because it sounded like you. Cool. You know, even though that was my first exposure to you. Yeah. Like, you're putting your mark on something and making it your own. Even when it's something that is so like stylistic, you know what I mean? I mean Springsteen, yeah. he has his thing. But you found your own voice in that. It's it's hundred percent unintentional because I probably tried to cover it exactly like, you know, <laughs> but I'm really bad at playing other people's music. So it it by the nature of it, it just I put my own mark on it. I love it. And I <laughs> I think that's how a lot of people you know what I mean? We try to my beginnings in music were a lot of trying to learn tunes and learning them wrong okay. and ending up writing my own song out of it. Right? Yeah. I think that happens to a lot of us, and that's how you end up finding your own it's voice. It's like two hats. Like, would you say, so you started by learning other people? You started learning covers, or did you start writing on your own? Or did it? they both they, happen? They happened at the same time. Because yeah. as soon as I could kind of play, I wanted to come up with something, you know? Yeah. Mine was kind of the opposite. Like I'm actually not a very musical person. Like I don't, I can't read music. I don't know much about theory. That's why my awesome band always helps me with that. I mean, over the years I've learned, of yeah, course, but yeah. but it doesn't. It's not my first thing. I was always just like poems, really, and words, and mm-hmm. everything else sort of surrounded that. So, you know, the whole time when a lot of people were like 16, 17, sitting in their bedroom learning music. I didn't, I, that wasn't me. I, I wish it was because it gives you such a strong foundation for to to start from, I think. You it know? can. Yeah, I mean, I'm self-taught too, you know, and I guess we find our own way. Yeah. And then I met people who knew a lot and I yeah. just kind of absorbed it over time, yeah. you know. Yeah, right. Which is, it, but I wanted to talk about, let's start kind of at the beginning for you, like 
significant moments in your path to the point where you're like, oh, this is what I, I want to do this. I'm going to have a life mm -hmm. in music. You know, do you, yeah. can you pick some along the way? Do you know when it started? I was thinking about this, you know, as I was sort of knowing that I was going to be coming here today. And it always, sure, there's moments throughout, yeah. like starting super early. And now I've been doing it for so long. I'm like 58 years old. I've been doing it for many, many years. And uh, it always was just like a steadfast friend that I yeah. that never gave up on me and I never gave up on them. It's been a super long friendship. And, you know, it started with a feeling. Like I remember the feeling the first time I played an electric guitar. Yeah. That feeling has not gone away. <laughs> and, uh, you know, other than that, it's just I remember a feeling when I was young, the first time I was on a stage, I, I remember I was in Balboa Park, San Diego. Mm -hmm. It was like a Sunday. I think my mom and maybe my stepfather at the time and my two little, my brother and sister, we were just there and there's a stage at Balboa Park and, and nobody was there and I stepped up on it. And like, it was sort of like an amphitheater type thing. Like, and I like this. That feeling, <laughs> yeah. it's something just like struck me. I was like, because I never really did plays or like, you know, was I was a very shy person. And so I don't know, and I don't even know if I said anything when I was on the stage or I think I must have and I heard a little echo of mm -hmm. a voice. And it just, I remember the feeling because it was so strong. Yeah. I don't know. I can't put words around it besides it was a feeling. Yeah. What about that, the, the first time you played an electric guitar? Like what, I can, re I remember it too for myself, <sighs> but what was the... Was it the power? Was it the? I, I honestly don't know. It was just some, the sound. And it wasn't an acoustic guitar. Yeah. I, I didn't. I still don't really feel. I have one. I write on them. But well, like, I want to it's talk about so that because you you're a rocker. Yeah, you know what I mean? You play like, electric guitar always. Yeah, I think. I honestly don't know. It's just you know could have been. It had to be the sound. It had to be yeah. like I like the the flatness up against my body as yeah. opposed to acoustic. I liked. Yeah. Um, <sighs> Just it's less work than than acoustic, and you just like just little tiny things. It's so responsive. Mm -hmm. It's a great communicator, and for emotions that I had early on, which was probably a lot of angst, anger, <laughs> all that stuff. It's a perfect and being shy, for a little that. bit shy. You yeah, said, yeah, yeah, super yeah. shy. That was, I think, what it was for me. I'm like, oh wow, and you know. I yeah. was shy. I was very shy. Really, really retiring kind of kid. Yeah. You know? But all of a sudden, I'm like, oh, this, I like this voice way better than the one that comes out of my mouth. Okay, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, it was a way to communicate, I right. guess. You know, that didn't require words. And also, back then, I feel like, do you know if you would be walking down the street or you would hear, like, a band practicing or you would hear, or you'd be near a park and mm -hmm. you would hear a live band? It was an un an unusual thing it wasn't all the time like now no. like it's so saturated but like back then i remember being young you know whatever preteen teenagers when you would hear that you'd be drawn to it you'd be like what is go not even what is going on but i got to get closer to that mm -hmm. sound yeah. just like a magnet yes you know? that's the word it, it pulled you yeah i remember you know being a kid and older kid across the street you know um play guitar and he would like open his window and play mm -hmm. and he had a, you know a big amp a stack you know and uh i would go over and just kind of sneak around and like sit on his lawn out of view <laughs> near the window just to listen i was like yeah it was something about it it just it was it made you feel like i don't know connected to something you know yeah connected to something and, and the the good thing is i think young people to, it's still happening yeah you know it's different our experience my you know it was unique because the times were so different and and yet it still happens well talk about that I, does this tie into your you know your your work as an educator i mean is that what you're basing that on or just observations of the music scene here or in general about um about how you're seeing that this you know it's a little it's different than it was for you and I but it's still happening yeah um I teach at a couple different colleges like UB yeah University of Fredonia. Buffalo and SUNY Fredonia 
and other places too. Um, but there's a there's an exuberance with young people that still exists. Like mm -hmm. I, I know they get a lot of pushback from older people, but they're really they're good young people, and they get they get excited about things. I don't yeah. like so I'm I'm in the English department. Not in the, I was in the music industry department when I was there at Fredonia. Oh yeah, they're they're starting bands. They're like, you know, they're they're also doing like a lot of kids are doing the hip hop and that's mm -hmm. good. And they'll make their tracks. They maybe have different ways that they create music sometimes, and sometimes it's the same as we used to do it, like Garage Band. But yeah. it really it really comes from the same place and it leads to the same place. You know. Yeah. Um, that's encouraging. I mean, yeah, I would say it's actually now that I think about it, it's kind of good to be working with young people um, because it, it, I think it will be easy to forget that. You know, it, as as like since I'm not like dialed into like the scenes that are happening in Buffalo right now, we all have our own little worlds that we right. exist in. So I I suppose that maybe I could get a little bit. I don't want to say bitter, but like, oh, the good old days. It was different mm -hmm. then because I'm not physically in it anymore mm. but i feel like the young people have helped me avoid that yeah thinking because I, I know it's still happening i completely agree having a you know a musician son definitely did yeah. that for me oh you for know? sure <clears throat> yeah and then when i hear people of our age or you know around there like ah there's you know all the good stuff is from before. There's nothing good happening now. They're so wrong. They should finish that sentence with "for me" because for I me, feel because I stopped mood. trying, right? Yeah, yeah. Or, or because like I, I still like the, you know they say that people don't get. Let's see, what's the age? It's I think it's like 23. Some study they did after the age of 23, people typically stop getting new favorite artists and music. Mm -hmm. And I kind of, I think back to the people I liked when I was young, 18 to 23, and I'm like, oh, yeah, they're still, still my favorites. Them. Yeah. So, like, there is something to be said for that. It doesn't hit you, hit me the same way as it used to, but I know their new stuff is hitting them the same way it used yeah. to hit me. So it goes on. Yeah, for sure. And digging, I am finding bands that I'm like, I have new favorite bands a lot. That's great. And it, I, I'm, I'm lucky. I mean, it's part of what I do for a living, but also, you know, my son has hipped me to a lot of stuff. Yeah. And, and all the musicians that were around him did, you know. So I just, I think music's in good hands. I'm glad to hear that. And like some of the new stuff you like, how, do you like it for the same reasons you, you always have like a favorite, you know? I think so. I mean, yeah, there's... It's like that thing, that feeling you described with the first time you played an electric guitar. Yeah. It's been a, for me, I can totally relate to that. It's just been a direct line and whenever, and it's every day, you know, mm -hmm. pick it up, I'm like, ah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm like, dreams do come true. That thing <laughs> is still here and it's been here all along. So when I hear a new band that I totally love, it's it's maybe the particular reasons are, are different, but that feeling, you know, that mm -hmm. relatability, it doesn't really matter how old you are, or how young they are, or, you know, vice yeah. versa. You That's know, it's a good just thing. there. You know, there are so many challenges and things that change and mm -hmm. like adapting to it and accepting things as they change. That's not been easy. But yeah. just to have that, the reason I haven't stopped doing it has not changed yeah you know what i mean it's still why i it, i love that so much that i've been that i put up with so much of the, the bullshit over yeah, the years totally. you know <laughs> if it was yeah. any other job i would i would have been gone probably walked. 30 years ago <laughs> <Totally>. yeah <laughs> <laughs> i could really uh, uh, yeah well said <laughs> well, you talked about relating to lyrics really early on can you talk about that i mean you know you you do teach english now mm -hmm. um I'm wondering, is that kind of a through line for you? Is it the language? Is it the lyrics, the poetry? And and it's lyric writing be. is its own art. It's different yeah. than all of those, you know. It's it's like for me, writing lyrics, that's mm -hmm. the one thing that I feel, I'm very confident about mm -hmm. for myself. All the other, like I feel like my singing supports the songs, my guitar playing supports the songs, and I'm okay at those, but I just feel like the one thing I aspire to be good at is the words. And I always have been a word person. Mm -hmm. Like words just matter so much to yeah. me, like in general. Like, and, and that 
certainly came from both of my parents. You know, when we were very little, you know, they were both college students and it was the, it was the, you know, it was the student rights movement or the, you know what I mean? And the civil rights movement. And it was during that time and the music we always had playing on our little hi-fi was just all the best music. Like, and that's where somehow it, it encapsulated how I turned out to write. And I'm talking, yeah. it was always like, you know, Leonard Cohen, Simon mm. and Garfunkel, Bob Dylan, Joni Mitchell, Ian and Sylvia, like, and on and on and on. And so all of those people are very li lyric uh, focused. And so I, I just paid attention to how much I think my parents responded to it. In fact, my dad, when we were little, he would be like, get in here, get in here, you gotta hear this. Do you listen, do you hear what he just said? That are, you know, and... Uh, Dylan's a good one for that, for yeah, sure. Yeah, for sure. And Joni. Uh, yeah, and Leonard Cohen. Oh my God. And, si and Paul Simon. <coughs> they're the best, Yeah, they're the best. So, I mean, that's how, you know, when you see your family together, which not long after that, our, my family just completely split apart, but, but I feel like something about that resonated. And so it represented like... Family to you too? Yeah, yeah. for sure. How cool. Yeah. Did you... um? Did you have favorites and what? And what about this? All the people you mentioned, I wouldn't want to say that their lyrics were tied to activism necessarily, but they were definitely unafraid to comment. You know, I mean, these are the people who really moved it away from just relationship songs. Yeah. You know, did that stick with you? I mean, is that? Part I mean, yes and no because aren't they all still about? They're all relationship relationships, songs, I but guess. they're not just "I it's love you, baby." It's super introspective, so, and it's yeah. yeah, it's it really went sort of maybe stream of consciousness in a way, and yeah. like different, it broke some of the so-called rules that were dominating the pop charts, right? Yes. And so, and it and that in itself just represented the latest movement that had happened, you know, and then it changed, and then it changed again, and changed again, and but it's so it's changing again now. Yeah, you know? yeah, but do you? Uh, does anyone stick with you? Like when you're writing lyrics now, I'm assuming the people that you love and who inspired you the most are probably just part of your DNA now and you're yeah, not I think thinking so. about it. I mean, when I write lyrics now, um, you know, it's a lot, it's a different kind of work because I'm so aware of everything I've done before mm -hmm. and I'm so in a different way self-conscious. Like I'm thinking more, it's less, inspiration more like you know workman like mm -hmm. you know craft and yeah more craft refining it and it, and it's also unfortunately when you have to shoehorn it in yeah to your busy <laughs> life that's not ideal and that's probably why we haven't put out an album in 10 years we're yes. just putting one out now really yeah. we've done singles and little projects but that's why because as an artist you can't shoehorn it into your life right and and you know i made a decision at least 10 years ago 15 years ago that i was like i i don't want to be so poor anymore i want to have health insurance i don't want to be having my lights turned off so that's when i went back and got my master's degree and then i started teaching and so that's all good now i have different i'm not suffering from that anymore yeah. but there's but now it's a struggle to keep that spark going inside of yourself keep the keep the flame yeah lit because you're so busy right i think for a lot of people who are you know working in this field now it's different i mean a lot of the people that we idolized it was all they did you know what i mean and i think now if if, if you look at buffalo just as a case study mm -hmm. um i know I can, you know, count on one hand the people I know who are just doing music. Right. Everyone has a day job. Right. And yet, somehow, the people in our scene are very prolific. Like they're they're doing it. You yeah. Know? And it's all like how you think of it. Like for me, it's been adjusting how I perceive myself as mm -hmm. an artist, like, because I'm, I can't quite get to the point where I say music is a hobby. <laughs> right. You know, I can't quite get there. I, but I think in the past two years, maybe I just said, oh, oh, I'm an artist. I'm a yeah. recording artist. Yeah. I'm a songwriter. 
and that you can't people for who if music was a hobby you wouldn't make an album you know what i mean you wouldn't maybe 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 just what a vanity project but none of you know you're let's just say why why make an album now i mean why yeah what's the point what is the point and I ask myself this, and I keep yeah. doing it anyway. Yeah. But I'd like to hear your thoughts on that. Well, that year is going to go by whether or not you mm. made an album. You know, and for That's me, a great answer. You know, I love it. yeah. Uh, like, I still have. I, I want to say I have a lot of ego, but not in the way egotistical. But right. like, I not narcissism. Just. Yeah, I I feel like I still assign a certain meaning to like our sort of our reputation and the and just to sort of I don't know put like a an exclamation point on the fact of like yeah what we do actually does matter yeah even just to me like I assign meaning to it and so therefore I feel responsible to continue it and it's all invented in my own head but yeah. but it still becomes an actual thing when you act on it no question you know <laughs> yeah I love that that's a great answer so yeah new album best things um Let's talk a little bit about, you know, the process. And as you said, it's been 10 years. You've, yeah. You haven't been inactive during that time, but you haven't done this sort of snapshot, long-form snapshot yeah. of your time. Yeah, yeah the, the commitment document of, like of your time. Six months, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I love it. I mean, I'm just, all the people we worked with, I could, you know, if you look at the album credits, yeah. so many amazingly talented generous wonderful people on the record which is just so it was a really fun process i've had i've made albums before where it was stressful and mm. like a lot of like issues sometimes if it's not financial then it's yeah. like personalities and it's like you know like now i'm more assertive because i know what i want but i'm also better at like communicating so it's not like there's not like butting of heads or anything yeah. none of that on this record so it made the process so fun and rewarding so that part is really good and also um what, what was the beginning of your question do you even remember oh uh <laughs> did you say why did i make it no wait, yeah wait. why i mean why make an album now you know we kind of talked about that but what made you like all right it's time part of it is like a little bit of a rebellious spirit my best friend debbie claus she said for years she said to me you know what you got because <laughs> she's my she's been our road tour manager been there the whole entire time seen everything and she's like she basically is like al why are you still doing this and so the she she said for years she's like all right you know what you got to name your next record i'm like what she goes the last one <laughs> and i'm like fuck you i'm not gonna do that so, <laughs> so we banter about it and it's actually good because it it, it you know it gives you something to push back against yeah, right yeah yeah i mean that is it is an act of rebellion in a small way yeah to, to do this now and you have enough people that you that i cross paths with there they just continue to say such nice things about loving the music that we yeah. make and i'm like they encourage me too there's been several times where i've literally been i can't do this anymore i'm done i'm done but out of nowhere someone will pop up and say listen here's what this record meant to me or here's what i just want to thank you for this and i'm like oh my gosh okay maybe i'll take that sign and i'm i'm gonna keep doing it you know yeah that's that's awesome and it 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 makes me think that well i guess that's why music matters right i mean you know it you throw something out there and somebody welcomes it into their life and then they relate to it and it becomes theirs as well yeah. you know that's huge that's that's nothing to be it's nothing to dismiss and yeah. so you know that's again why why i keep doing it because i i just think you know it's just like anything if you're good at anything if you're good at like restoring old cars or if you're good at growing a garden or if you're good at training dogs or whatever yeah. it is all of it matters yeah you know just gotta find your little place and and do the best you can within that space and the thing with the music industry is so messes you up so bad because it's associated with so much um you know i mean what other job do you have when you walk into work and everyone starts clapping for you you know like <laughs> so like that can go that can get to your head after a while and you're you like can't. i must be great because it's, you know <laughs> <It's> true <laughs> that's right i mean i worked at the buffalo news for a couple decades no one clapped when they i didn't? came in no 
I didn't understand what was wrong. Did Dale Anderson I, never clapped for you when you walked in the room? Dale, Dale's an exception. <laughs> okay, He's good. He's one of us. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Dale Anderson. Yeah, inspiration. Oh, good yeah. dude. <laughs> awesome guy. Yeah. He was like talking. He was the guy that gave me my first three albums. He was very random. I got signed. Michael Meldrum, yep. Dale Anderson, boom. And this guy called, uh, oh, God, please let me remember. Gray. Carrie Gray? Yeah. A DJ? Right, the DJ, yeah. Played my record in regular rotation. So my was, was it the river? What was it called then? The Planet? The Planet. Or was that before? The, I don't remember. No. Or was but, it called the Eclipse? Oh, no, that's, that's <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I knew we'd get to it somehow. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that. What about that idea of mentorship? Um, you know, across generations, yeah. I've really seen that in Buffalo. And I don't know. You know, I haven't. I mean, I've lived here since 1990. Now I don't have a ton to compare it to. But a lot of people I talk to who grew up in other cities and even you know bigger music scenes, they find that kind of surprising and, really and i thought the level of mentorship here has it continues to you know but you mentioned yeah. michael meldrum i mean talk about that a little bit you know having somebody like that who like unbelievable believes guy. in you it, like it just mattered so much to so many people mm -hmm. and this sort of you know talk about loving music and talk about like yeah it was a certain style that he really liked sure. folk and stuff yeah. like that but but he respected he, everything, I felt Yeah, like. that's true. He was just so enthusiastic about it forever, his whole, you know. Um, and and that is like, that's a good example of one person can actually make it, mm -hmm. actually create a scene in a lot of ways he yeah. did. And it was just his unrelenting enthusiasm and support. And honestly, I never heard him say a bad word about anybody, mm. which is, you know, super rare. Yeah. You know, I really never did. And we spent a lot of time together. And he, you know, I know there's plenty of times where he got the shaft a little bit. Like, Definitely. From, and, you know, and he never said a bad word about anybody. No bitterness. You, yep. know, you couldn't detect any. Yeah. Super rare. Yeah. And that is kind of a Buffalo thing. I mean, do you find, I know, you you know, you say you're like sort of out of the scene, but you're really not. I mean, do you find... Um, that you've been that for other people? I can say yes. Yeah. And only because, you know, I knew it when it was happening. I still continue to be. It's pretty easy to help, to do a little something to help somebody. And it means a lot to them. Just like, because I can appreciate the many people who did the same thing for me. Yeah. And I like doing that because, um, it's it's you know payback. I got it. I got to do as I was done. You know. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Totally. And uh, you can just and it's and it's good to do it. It's just the right thing to do. Yeah. It's just the right thing to do. Yeah. That's huge. Um, speaking of the right thing to do, do you think that a songwriter has a responsibility to comment on and reflect and possibly work to? make some change within the moment within their their time no i do not i mean Good. like i really don't uh because it's so well i guess i would say a songwriter has a responsibility to be there to find their best version of themselves and put that out there and like you know what i mean so if you're it depends on what kinds of things you write and you know because i found that like certain times the hardest type of song to write is one that has a theme to it or a type yeah. like i've written like one i think type of a protest song you would say but it's it's not easy to do and if it's especially it because it's been done so well oh, in the past yeah you know, that's like, true if it's something you, that comes naturally to you then absolutely you know but um if it doesn't you can't that's one thing would be a mistake to try to force yeah right <laughs> yeah yeah i believe that I wasn't sure how you would answer that question, you know? Yeah. Do you, what do you think? I guess it kind of depends on the day. Let's just say this right okay. away. I completely agree with you that you need to be true to whatever is inside of you that you're trying to express. Yeah. Um, but I can also answer it this way 
over the past, you know, several years, a little bit less than 10, say, <clears throat> I've been wanting more from people that I really have looked up to and kind of, I guess, relied upon, even though it's not their responsibility. Yeah. I wanted more because I do believe that songs can kind of make a difference. You know what? I totally agree with that. And I remember like it was way back, I think the Gulf War, I think mm -hmm. Neil Young made yeah. some comment. He's like, where is everybody? Where is Why everybody? isn't anybody saying anything? And I that resonated with me. And per, well, if I could just sort of venture a guess on this, like there are plenty of people who are commenting on things and yes. making, you know. I wouldn't say no one. Right. Yeah. But I feel like to a larger extent, like just we have so much sensory input. Everything is blasting in on us for so long that your brain, just my brain, just spends all its time trying to trying to navigate through all the stuff that's coming in that how can you put something out? Also, yeah. there's nothing new to put out because everyone's already saying everything. It's just like, you know, I think you would have to probably just shut everything down and start from the inside start out. Over. Yeah. yeah. Well, I will say this. Yes, everyone comments constantly whether they have an informed opinion or not. Um, but I can't remember the last time someone took a social media comment or a thread or you know, harangue and like sat down and put headphones on and studied it and welcomed it into their life the way that a song or an album, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Yeah. So I just don't see them as being the same. I agree. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Dude. All right. It's a wrap. We solved the world's problems. I actually have Thank a question you, for you. Yeah. Because I was reading your uh, website. Yeah. Which is a really good website, by the way. I Thank love you, the way Allison. you have it all organized. It looks great. You were nominated for a Pulitzer Prize. Yes. Dude, that's amazing. How, tell me what, what was that? Tell me about that. Um, For, as a music columnist and through the Buffalo News, um, Margaret Sullivan, uh, who was my editor person that hired me and is yeah. now, has gone from the New York Times to the Washington Post, is now at the Guardian. Damn. She's a, she's a hero of mine, you know, not just because she gave me a shot and, you know, allowed me to have a life yeah. in Buffalo, really, um, at least to support a family. Um, I mean, yeah, that was amazing. And I think, I can't remember who, I mean, I didn't win, but I mean, <laughs> this is a cliche, doesn't matter. but it's an honor just to be no, nominated. No, it doesn't matter. But That's by real. the way, I, if that were me, I would have like everything printed, Pulitzer Prize nominated. Jeff, Mo I had to. I just came across it on your website. I was like, dude, you buried the lead. I would be. I would have it on my T-shirt right always. now. <laughs> <laughs> Allison, that's awesome. <laughs> I have been accused of burying the lead a lot. Oh it, well, that's maybe part of your charm. Well, I didn't know I had <laughs> charm, but thank you. I, um. You know, I don't like to say what I don't like in people, but I like to say what I do like in people. And I realize that there are traits and humility is one of them. You know, I mean, I don't really like people that tout their stuff all the time. Yeah. <laughs> I'm guess, sure we've all been at a party, Allison, right? Like, hey, my new album's out. And, you, you know, somebody's like corners you and they like, they make you sit there and listen to their whole thing. I get that feeling because... You created something, you want to share it, right? Yeah. But I always thought, I'm like, I don't want to be that guy. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I'd but rather let people come to it. The fact that it, you, you know? have the thought means you're not that guy. Ah. Right? They don't have that thought. No, they don't. No. No, it's so automatic. Like, <laughs> listen to my record. <laughs> um, but I want people to listen to your record, and I want them to know about the release party, I think, is May 11th. Yeah, it's at May the Sportsman's 11th. Tavern, May 11th. Um, Shout out to the Sportsman's. Love them. Love everybody there. That's a speak, you know, talking of mentors and people who have, like, helped me continue. The Hall to, family. For yeah. sure. Yeah. So, yeah, that's going to happen. Very excited about that. We are trying to, we're working on getting the word out, getting some outside reviews, you know, because me, I'm like, I love Buffalo, and and I'm happy with all the support we consistently get here. And also, I'm. You are loved. I'm, you very are loved. I feel it actually. Yeah. I love it, and I feel it. And I'm also trying to not to go be outside of Buffalo too. Yeah. I'm like you know what I mean? Why not? Yes. Why not do that again? Yeah. You know? So, 
touring or or select dates or select dates no touring at this point only because you've got jobs <laughs> yeah and it's so expensive it and, is it's a different world you know it's a i would love to tour again like honestly you know i i still have these little dreams like we love big stages yeah love big stages that's sort of what i where i feel like the most at home so like or like you know bigger stages mm -hmm. right but um you know we we're we're gonna do like select cities hopefully going to new haven connecticut in june and like working on little things here places and there. you've gone before yeah p places where we know people and we know we have and, fans yeah. and support to make it not worth not only financially worthwhile but like just to make it be a rewarding experience yeah emotionally worthwhile yeah. right yeah so little things like that and um focusing on the good things that we have coming up and yes being more selective i think just because yeah talk can you talk about your band a little bit absolutely great pat shaughnessy drums yeah. since oh, 2001 yeah. or 2002 i know he's, he's so that's been fantastic the bonnie carlos of buffalo I call yeah him. he would love to hear that yeah <laughs> i love pat um he's rock solid and also you know we mentioned this about mike meldrum I've never really heard Pat say anything bad about anyone either. Me too. Super. <laughs> Great human. Yeah. Steady temperament, which yeah. like is so good for 20 years in a band, you know, love. That's like. Easy smile. I always, when when we do go on tour, I always made Pat and I share a room because I'll, he's so easy going. I'll be yeah. like, okay, tonight we're doing face masks. And he's like, nice. okay. Nice. He'll do it. Yeah. Oh, Excellent. for sure. Stuff like that. So. Um, Pat Shaughnessy, my brother-in-law, Graham House yeah. plays guitar. Yeah. You know Gray yes. from bands in the past. He's yeah. so flipping good. He's amazing. And he lo he's interested in the songs and supporting, and he cares about my music. And I feel like he finds things in there that are his own too. Like he creates yeah. his own yep. universe and your music too. For sure, my sister Natalie. Yeah. Um, so many roles she plays in the band. You know, she sings backing vocals. She plays tambourine she but she's like the sounding board like the steady like she's a sober person like yeah. literally sober yeah. person which every band should have that you in, need you one <laughs> and, i was never it <laughs> <laughs> that's why i that's why I, you know she also like any like a great person to bounce ideas off or tell you when you're wrong or when you're right and you yeah. know that you can trust yeah too. and besides just the stuff on stage is the stuff off stage mm -hmm. too you know and ben clark on bass yeah. guitar He's so good. He's so musical. He's so, like, he gets very involved with the process. He co-produced co the album with me, like, from step one all the way through the end, just, like, many ideas. He's a listener, too. He yeah. listens. And that's, we have a good rapport because we listen to each other. I th I'd like to think he thinks I listen to his ideas, yeah. too. You know what I mean? Yeah. So we, and just his bass playing, oh, man. I can't, my band is so good that like when we're actually playing, I can't pay any attention to them because if I listen, I lose my place. You know what I mean? Yeah, because you you want to be a listener, right? Yeah. That's how awesome want, they are. That's how it's I like listening to them. a pretty healthy sign. Yeah. For sure, yeah. Are you, are you going to record anything live, you think? Do you do it for yourself anyway? No. At this point, no. Be, well, first of all, I do not... I don't listen, I never listen to myself live or look at myself live anymore. In the past I probably did, but now I'm like, mm -mm. I don't need one more reason to quit because I'm so, <laughs> I'm so self, I'm so critical. Like I'm a very pitchy singer. You know, I'm, I just, I'm like, I have found myself in the past saying, why does anybody like me? Because, th but that's just a normal human thing. Well, everyone is critical. Yeah. So, or if they're not they're you got a problem. Yeah. So I don't. <laughs> Do we have plans to do anything live? No. I, everyone always films us now, record yeah. whenever we're there. I'm like, yeah, it'll be everywhere whatever, anyway. But yeah. I'm not, I'm going to pretend it doesn't exist. Yeah. That's not good for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm really looking forward to hearing this stuff live and seeing where you take it next. I appreciate and, the time. Yeah. The opportunity. I, I think you're doing a really great thing here. Well, thank you. I feel like that today because you're awesome to be around. Oh, that's so nice. <laughs> oh, I wanted to ask you, you did a podcast yourself for around 40 episodes. 37 episodes, I believe. That's I love huge. doing it. I had a great, I like, I stopped doing it because it was so much work. work. 
you have an awesome team here too. I oh, know I'm, it's already I'm so much, yeah. And so I love podcasts. I love listening to them. I love I liked making it a lot, but yeah. like it was a lot of work per episode. Plus I always wanted it to be like again, being critical. Like I wanted if there was like This isn't good enough. Yeah. I would fix things and that it was a learning curve. So I know how to do it now. I love doing it, but it had to go away because just because. What did you learn from doing it, not just technically about how to do it, but from the people that you spoke with? You know, I, I feel like since I've been doing this, I can't even remember how many episodes, but less than a year, you mm -hmm. know, we're coming up on that. But, you know, I started with the question, you know, like, why does music matter? I want to ask people that and not just be like, what are you promoting? Even though that's interesting too. Yeah. Um, I've just been... I've really learned a lot from the people that I've spoken with. And that was kind of the goal. And I was often surprised by what they said. Yeah. It, it wasn't what I expected them to say. Yeah. yeah, a lot of, I'd say most of the people I talked to, I already knew as friends and some mm -hmm. and collaborators. What I liked about it was just getting to new, know like new versions or new parts of them. Yeah. It's just, you know, we talked about things in a very sort of um, organized format. Yeah. And it, it was so, you're right, it was super fun to just talk. I love talking and listening to people talk. Yeah. And whatever comes, it's not planned, but it leads somewhere, you yeah. know? And, and it does, it it was always like, just like this conversation, I'm enjoying it because it's getting me thinking about things. And that's we, and exactly, that's like, how I feel. Yeah, and, it's, and we're like people who like to sort of dig into things and like, what about this, what about that, you know? Why does music matter? Like that, there's a question, Yeah. you know? Can you answer it now? No, it doesn't <laughs> matter. And yet it, it's the only thing that matters. Yes. <laughs> oh, no. How am I ever going to do another podcast now? Know. You solved it. <laughs> I think that is the answer. <laughs> um, I just read a quote. I can't remember who it's from, but it was like, lyrics don't matter. Yet they matter more than anything else, mm. which I really loved. Yep. And I think the person who said it was trying to mentor somebody else to like, there's no such thing as writer's block. Lyrics don't matter. Say that to yourself. Oh, you, I'll try that next time. And yet they matter. I would beg to disagree. But. Oh, totally. You know, this person I know didn't really think that. But yeah, I, anyway. I got to always psych yourself out, right? Yeah, there. totally. Yeah. yeah, just keep going onward. Mm -hmm. Well, Allison, um, I do want people to know how uh, they can they can listen to the album. I yeah. mean, I, you know, obviously it's, it'll be streaming everywhere. Yep, it's allisonpipitone.com. It will be streaming everywhere. We're not releasing it until May 11th. Um, Day of the release party that's at the right. Sportsman's. We're going old school. Yep. Old school. That's right. We are getting, we have vinyl. We're going to get, first time I've done an album, physical this album. This is the first vinyl. Yep. Love it. Exciting. Excited about that. And CDs because people are starting to buy CDs again, they which are. is amazing. If you, I've talked to people at local record stores and they're like, oh, young people come in and buy CDs all Love the time. Love it. I mean, isn't that the best news we've heard in 10 it's, years? Yes. Oh, I got a bunch <laughs> in my attic. I should break them out again. That's right. Set up shop. Totally. So yeah. And so, yeah, pe I just hope people listen and and like it and share it with people. And uh, that's all we could ask for. Just listen. Yeah. Well, I've really enjoyed listening to you. I appreciate you being here. Uh, I look forward to the release party. And I'll urge everybody to check out this music because... Well, I just, I love what you have to bring. Thank you, it's, Jeff. You know, I always have. That's the best. All right, let's not be a stranger. Okay? Yeah, absolutely. All right. I'll, I'll see you at the Sportsman's. Oh, sounds good. Thanks for being here. Okay.